Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. And in this video, we're going to do an example of the hypergeometric distribution. We've seen in previous distributions what makes a hypergeometric distribution, and we've talked about the formula and the variables for that hypergeometric distribution. Here we have an example. Mrs. Stash is very organized. She keeps her four knives with Tiny Tim's 16 toys in the playroom bin. So we have a population of items in the, pop, in the playroom bin. In fact, we have a total of 20 items in that population. So our N in this example will be 20. Our population size will be 20. Tiny Tim blindly selects three items from the playroom bin without replacement. That without replacement is what makes that hypergeometric hypergeometric rather than a binomial, the fact that we are not replacing. And here he is selecting three items, so his sample is three items. So our sample size is three. Now, we also need to know what is the probability that Tiny Tim selects at least one knife. So our K is the total number of successes that we have. In this case, our success is for him to choose a knife. So we want to know the total number of knives in our population, and that is four. And Tiny Tim is going to choose exactly, no, at least one of those, at least one. So let's talk about what it means to be at least one. So if the doctor tells me I need to put on at least one bandage, that means I need to put on one or two or three or more. I can put on one or more bandages. So Tiny Tim, if he's going to select at least one knife, that means he's going to select one or two or three, but we have to stop here at three because the most he's going to select out of there is three. So here our X is one or two or three. So in order for us to use this formula, we need to find the probability where x equals 1 plus the probability that x is 2 plus the probability that x is 3. And add all those together. Remember those ors. Tell me to add that together and then if there happens to be any overlap, subtract that off. Now that looks like a lot of work, so I always start looking for the complement anytime that there's several little things that are involved. Could I use the complement? Well, here we have one, two, or three. What else is in the set of how many knives he could pull out? Well, he could pull out zero knives. So zero is the complement of one, two, and three. You got at least one. So zero is the complement. So we could just say that the probability of this is equal to one minus, so let me write it up here, the probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three is equal to one minus the probability of zero because zero is the complement of one, two, or three. And so if we just subtract that from one, we'll get that probability. It's kind of like when the weatherman tells you there's a 60% chance of rain the complement then is that there's a 40% chance that it won't rain. So we can take and subtract the, the complement to get um, the probability that it won't rain or that he gets at least one. So we're going to only have to find the probability of zero knives. So now I'm going to use my formula. In the denominator, I'm going to put the total number of ways that he could choose three items from his 20. He's got a population of 20 and he's choosing three. And in the numerator, we're going to put what he's looking for, the total number of successes. So he has a total number of four knives, but we're going to find that complement, so we just want zero there. So, now, if there are four knives or four successes in there to make up the 20, well, how many toys are there or how many failures are there? There are 16. 
And if he is choosing zero knives, how many of the toys would he have to choose? He would have to choose three toys. So now we've filled in for our formula. Notice that zero plus three does equal three, and four plus 16 does equal 20. Those should always add up like that. Now it's just a matter of doing the combinations. Four choose zero. Hopefully you've had enough work now with combinations that you know when, Z, when we're choosing zero items, we're just gonna end up with one there. 16 choose three, I'll put in the formula. So I have on bottom, I'm gonna have three factorial and 16 minus three factorial. And on top, I'm gonna have 16 factorial. Then in the denominator, I'm doing 20 choose three. So 20 factorial over three factorial times 20 minus three factorial. Now it's just a matter of doing some arithmetic. Let me do that for you. So we have, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna do this subtraction first. So I have that one times 16 minus three is 13 factorial. And that three factorial, we could count down three times two times one times the 13 factorial. On top, I'm gonna to stop at 13 factorial, 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 factorial. And the reason I stopped there is so that this 13 factorial divided by that 13 factorial gives me one. I could continue to simplify. We know that when we do these combinations that we should end up with um, one on our denominator here. So three goes into 15 five times. And two, well two can go into either the 16 or the 14, take your pick. I'll make it go into the 16 to get eight. It doesn't matter, we'll both get the same answer. So in my numerator, I'm gonna be left with one times eight times five times 14. Now that one is, since one times eight is just eight, I'm gonna leave the one off. So we got eight times five times 14 in our numerator. Then in my denominator, 20 minus three is 17 factorial. So on top there, I'm gonna stop at, thir at um, 17 factorial. 18 times 17 factorial. I still have that three, and remember it's three factorial, so it's three times two times one. I stopped at 17 factorial because 17 factorial divided by 17 factorial is just one. Again, we know that we should be able to simplify until the denominator's gone. So this three times two is six, and six can go into 18. So let's just take this whole six on bottom and divide it into, six, into 18 to get three because six goes into 18 three times. You could have done it differently. You could have said three goes into 18 six times and two goes into 20 10 times. It would still be the same in the end, it's okay. So here in my denominator, I have 20 times 19 times three. Again, I'd like to simplify before I multiply. So if I can, I'm gonna look for anything that divides. So notice this has a factor of five and this has a factor of five. Five goes into 24 times. And this four can go into that eight on top. So eight divided by four is just two. Now on bottom, I have 19 and three, they don't have any factors in common with two times 14. So now I'm just left with two times 14 over 19 times three, or 28 over 57. Now what I have just found is the probability of zero, but we wanna know what's the probability that Tim, Tiny Tim gets at least one. So we need to take that and in order to find out at least one, we're gonna subtract that from the whole set. So now we're gonna take to find the probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three, we're gonna take the whole set plus zero, subtract off that zero, the probability of zero, and we end up with 29 over 57 is our probability that he gets at least one knife. 
So there's an example of our hypergeometric distribution. Math made simple, it's Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.